What do you commonly see from other teams? Are there any themes that you see where people are either having the same question over and over, or maybe the same failure over and over that we can share with this group and help them avoid that pitfall? So one thing I see a lot of is not a lot of clarity around how leads should be worked. Tell us what you mean. So they don't yet have systems in place for how often do I call a number before I put it into a different category? Actually, what type of category should I have for my leads? Um, what does the follow-up process need to look like? What types of, what type of questions does every agent need to be asking a lead? They, they, it's, it's like I mentioned earlier, they're doing something themselves that's working well, but they didn't quite realize you need to write that out and make that the playbook for everybody else. So yeah. you, you have to slow it down a bit. Um, that's one really big thing that I see. They don't have rules for their CRM. Which, some of them, which, let's be real, some of you don't have a CRM, or you do, but it's it's growing cobwebs because you're not using it at a high level or at all. Well, you know what's funny, Katie? Just to encourage you all to, because you might be listening to this webinar thinking, I have so much to work on. I'm another mess and I didn't even realize it. <laughs> to encourage you guys, I heard Katie say when she first started, she was taking notes on paper. Harl hired me pretty last minute. I was laid off my job and he had already interviewed me. So I called him one day and was like, so I'm available. And I started the next day. I literally, we had a file cart with like a July folder, an August folder that lead sheets went into. So no, yes, get your systems in place. And Katie took a hundred or sold 144 with a fuzzy listing presentation and taking notes on paper. Yet the faster you can get that stuff in order, <laughs> the better. So why don't you talk real quick, Katie, um, and again, everybody, you don't have to have Katie or the Heil Group specific system, but if people are like, I don't even know where to start with creating a lead flow or, you know, what buckets or what, can you just tell us real quick, a simple way that they can start categorizing their leads and get some order going here? Yeah, absolutely. So um, it's going to vary. If you have leads that are coming into your system, say you're paying for ads, inbound leads, versus outbound prospecting, let's say you're making calls or doing open houses, right? Uh, for every inbound lead that we have coming into our system, we have a 24 hour timeline where somebody needs to make contact with that person within 24 hours. That's in our new category that comes in. Um, let's say I'm on the phone talking to somebody, I've identified them as a lead. They need to go into the system and they're labeled as a hot lead at this point. Um, you want to um, make sure that our, all your notes have the key um, important information, motivation, timeline, uh, where they're moving, that kind of specifics. And then a follow-up system. Every single, here's a really general good way to think of it in my opinion. Every single lead in your system should have a task set to it. Yep. Every single one, even if it's your great uncle who's in there just because they're your database, you should have a task set with them around your 33 touch at the bare minimum. Because yep. why else have them in your database right. if you don't have a lead? Also, your business is your database, your database is your business. We hear this time and time again. I use the term CRM interchangeably with database in that, in that statement. And the way I look at it is if you were to get out of real estate tomorrow and you wanted to sell your business, that is what you're selling. It's your CRM. So the more notes, the more information, the more accurate uh, contact information, the more valuable your CRM is. Yep. And then another thing to consider is, the number of qualified seller leads you have in your CRM is going to be directly proportional to the amount of success you'll expect in your business. Yeah, that's so you can continuously on a consistent basis be adding a new qualified seller lead into your system and have the have a plan of how you're following up with them. You are far and away light years beyond anybody and everyone else. And it's going to be a huge improvement for your business. And how do you say this is a qualified seller lead versus this is a seller lead? You know, how do you how do you they cross the line into qualified seller lead? So we actually don't really love the word lead or contacts on our team because what happens is you tell people, okay, you have a 20 contact goal, right? The challenge is I could make 20 contacts and every single one of those people is just disqualified seller. Yes. Um, you know, they're 22 year old kids. Somehow you got the list of a college sorority and that's what you called that day. Okay. 
Sure, you might have made 30 contacts, but them paying off, not likely. So what we did on our team is we got really a lot more uh, specific. And we determined that there really needs to be a couple different criteria that's going to push this person out of this lead category into what we call a nurture. And so for us, a nurture is somebody that's motivated, meaning, you know, they're not just kind of talking to you because they're bored, but they are seriously considering selling their house because of blank reason. I got a new job or better school district, what have you, right? Motivation, timeline, they are making the move within the next 12 months. Is there an opportunity for me to represent this person in a real estate transaction? Meaning, is this person I'm talking to a real estate agent? If so, eh, right? Is this person, is their mom their realtor? Have they already signed something? Eh. Um, and then the other component too is, am I getting their accurate contact information? which includes for us, email, phone, and then the property address that they're selling. And then the fifth criteria is they direct us when to follow up with them. So those are the five criteria of a nurture. And what we have really taught the agents on our team is when you're in the office and you're calling, you only get to pat yourself on the back and say you work that day if you put at least one nurture into the system. Yeah, because then that's five a week and you do that week after week and then you have your whole team doing that. You're basically creating an avalanche of leads. 100%. Yeah. Absolutely pay off. And Katie, in your experience, we got a big question of, well, how soon should I see my ISA pay off if they're, if they're nurturing? And again, guys, I think it can really depend on your system. So if you have an ISA that's only circle calling, let's talk about that. And that's going to take a bit longer. It can absolutely pay off. If you have them calling expireds in FISBO, you'll probably see a faster turnaround. So again, there's a lot of customization here, but general answer, Katie, if somebody joins the team today and they start adding people to the database, when would you say is generally realistic for when you'll probably start seeing some ROI and some turnaround on that? Generally for that specific agent, and I'll, and I'll do it like this because I think it helps when you're hiring that agent within six months, they should be making money okay. for themselves, right? So already, if you have a new agent coming on and making calls, they're, they're putting leads into the pipeline that the senior agents are calling. Now, some of them might have something pay off in as short as three months because they identified a nurture that's ready to go and they set an appointment and that agent takes it. Yeah. And and this is this is challenging to really answer, Anna, because it's like you mentioned earlier, there's so many different nuances to it that paying off for us it's a very short threshold because we aren't we aren't overextending ourselves in the payment that we make to these junior agents yeah. so it's it looks differently in different setups but for us it's pretty quickly that the payoff comes in now for that specific agent on average it's six months until they pay off till they get a deal does that make sense and that helps us when we're hiring because we tell them you need six month savings yeah six month savings and also i think it helps to have that mindset because if you don't go in with the mindset of this might take a while to see the return you can just feel like you're spinning wheels and start to question yourself and i think those first three to six months are the most challenging because you're doing all this work and you're not seeing much payoff yet it absolutely pays off over time you have to have grit and really stick in it um, i know when i first started I did a similar role in a different industry. I actually coached it in a different industry. So I knew inside sales up one way and down the other. In my first three months, I felt like a failure because I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm not really seeing appointments. I'm just talking with people. And Haro kept saying, stay at it. The right activities always lead to the right results. We were using Diana's gold scripts, proven to work. So everything we were doing was proven. It just needed time to actually pay off. So that's what I would really challenge you guys with. Make sure you're using proven systems and models because if you are, you know that they will work and then give it time and it will absolutely pay off.